Hello football fans, you are watching Australia's best soccer show online, Football 360. Thanks for your company, it's another jam-packed edition, so we'll get straight into it. Coming up this week, a comprehensive wrap of state league action featuring some stunning goals. We check in with the fan forum and go one-on-one -on -one with FFA boss David Gallup. Do you remember this Scottish legend? The maestro Paul McStay pops in for a chat. And from Manchester to Perth, we uncover another star in the women's league. But first, Bunbury flirted with relegation last season but managed to stay in top flight football. And despite several changes at the top in the past 18 months, the Bunbury boys are confident. In my reckoning, you'd probably be about the fifth coach in the last 12 months. How have you found the challenge so far? I think um, it's interesting. I mean, I arrived in December um, to do a job in the Football Federation Southwest with Football West. So, I mean, I got called in uh, a little bit later on when they had a change of manager with Mickey Kane. So, the club needed a little bit of direction. And that's not to say that the management didn't do the job properly, but from top to bottom, they need good structure and organisation. So, I mean, when I've come in as an assistant, I've tried to give that. Moving forward, there's a lot more that as an individual and as a head coach, I will put into place, uh, bringing the club together with the 23s and the 18s a little bit more, a little bit more solid and solidifying things, so to speak. So, I mean, I'm feeling fairly positive. I've always played full time. I've always been full time professional for the last 15 years. So it's been hard to adapt to part time football and to coming over to Australia and playing. Played 450 league games in England, and highlights would be playing at the New Wembley and, and winning at the New Wembley, I suppose. The lads have been brilliant, the lads are, are buying into what Matt and the other coaching staff are trying to do and what we're trying to achieve and it's been a pleasure coming in and trying to, trying to push this club in a, in a direction that I don't think we've had before. With the clubs not getting relegated this year, I just want, I want continuity for the players, you know, there's a lot of local lads within the squad as, as well as imports, let's be honest, but I think I want the lads, if, if we are seen as a club that are not challenging at the top, I want the top clubs to start looking at players thinking, well, you know, we could take him and for the lads to grow and develop their own careers, because that's exactly what I want to do. There's no thought of just survival. If you, if you go into football games and just think about survival, it's, it's pointless. We're going into every game expecting to win and we're finding a feet and we're kicking on in the right direction. He was called the maestro for his ability to lead his teams on and off the field. Now he calls Australia home. Football 360 recently caught up with Scottish legend Paul McStay. The motivation was the kids. We've been over here on holiday in Australia, over in Sydney, for about 12 years on and off. And we just love the lifestyle here. Our kids are very sporty. They love tennis, athletics, they love the football, obviously. And we just felt it was a great environment for them to grow up in. I'm involved in a software company, it's called Mice of Sports and uh, really excited by uh, what's going on there now. I think what we've got makes a difference to football at this moment in time but also sport in general. The passion for football never goes away. Celtic fan before I signed for them, uh, that's where I just love to go to the games and watch my hero Ken Endo Leash and from there progress into the team and uh, once you stop playing you never lose that. Uh, keep in touch with the club and just want to do well. Probably the fondest uh, moment of my career was when I scored at Ibrox in 1988. Uh, it was a sort of league decider against Rangers and I managed to score with my left foot. So not just because it was against Rangers, a league decider, but scoring with my left foot was probably one of the big things. It's very intense, the build up to the match and obviously got two group of Two groups of fans who don't see eye to eye in that 90 minutes and it creates a magnificent atmosphere. And as a player I think uh, you just want to play in those types of games no matter where you are. And uh, My derby was uh, the Celtic Rangers game and it was just a great occasion. More than 100 fans filed into Dorian Gardens this week to contribute to a fan forum. The panel included FFA boss David Gallup, A-League CEO Damien DeBowen, Perth Glory owner Tony Sage, coach Alistair Edwards and Football West CEO Peter Hugg. A number of topics were discussed, 
including the future of the A-League, a Socceroos game being hosted in Perth and the National Premier League. Let's have a listen to David Gallup. The game's got more potential for growth than any other sport in Australia. Uh, it's the truly global game. It's the game that's a bridge to Asia. It's got the biggest base of the pyramid with participants. Um, the A-League now a viable competition. There's a lot to look forward to in Australian football. We need to continue to work on building revenues in A-League clubs, making sure that there's less reliance on private owners putting their hands in their own pockets, connecting the grassroots of the game to the elite end of the game, giving grassroots people value for the contribution that they make to the game. All of those are challenges. I'm really enjoying being part of the game, watching the game. I always liked and admired football and it's been great to be involved in it over the last six months. The panel also addressed soccer officials in a formal luncheon at Nib Stadium where WA great Gary Marocchi was recognised for his achievements and services to the game. Be watching our new junior show, Shoot, next week to find out the winner of our Smarter Than Smoking Junior Player of the Month competition. The winner receives an Apple iPad. So we're with Charlotte Farrell, the Northern Redbacks' newest import from Manchester City. Charlotte, welcome. Tell us about your stay in WA so far. Uh, so far it's been good. Weather's a bit hot. Apart from that, it's been really good. Football is better than I expected here. So you played for Manchester City. What's the football like over there? Uh, football's a little bit better standard. City play in the National Women's Premier League, which is just one below the professional Super League. They've actually just got accepted for, for next season, so they'll be in the Super League next season. It's quite competitive, lots of good players, lots of international young players. Northern Redbacks have their own particular style of coaching, but how does that compare to your coach back at Man City? Well, Lee, the head coach at City, is a, a UEFA B licensed coach. Very tactical, and everything's at your feet, lots of ball work. How are you enjoying playing with the girls at Northern Redbacks? They're, they're really good. They're all a good bunch of girls. Very good. Some very good footballers as well. So it's been really good. And your aspirations in football in WA? Well, maybe try out for Perth Glory at the end of the season. Uh, football means everything to me. The being a part of the team, getting fit, going out there every weekend with your teammates and trying to achieve one goal. It's been another massive round as far as State League action is concerned. Let's take a look at the highlights, starting with the match behind me, Bayswater at home against Balcatta. So never forget, only those who can see the invisible can accomplish the impossible. Some spirited and uplifting words in the dressing room from local Liberal MP Ian Britzer inspired the Basie boys as they marched out to take on old rivals Balcatta at Frank Drago Reserve. Todd Howarth and Larry Miller were out due to injury, but the Black and Blues were boosted with new signing Jamie Coyne, a former Perth Glory player and brother of Bayswater coach Chris Coyne. But despite all the fanfare, Balcatta jumped out of the blocks first and came close to putting the ball into the net within the first 60 seconds. Bayswater were patient in the build-up and it almost paid dividends. Balcatta though were resilient and tenacious from the outset and were giving as good as they got. Mo attack again looked threatening. Both teams weren't giving an inch as the ball moved from end to end. Both teams stubborn in defence. Balcatta had somewhat of a shot on goal but the game was craving a moment of inspiration. Steve Burton found some space but was ruled offside. A minute later, he was clear and on the run but fired the ball wide. Neil All at the half-time break. 
Balcata started the second 45 with the same enthusiasm as they did the first, but Bayswater found some momentum and came close after hitting the upright with this long range effort. The best chance of the game then fell to Steve Burton, who received a delightful ball on the run, finding himself one-on-one -on -one with the keeper, but took too long to make it count. The game had attracted much interest from rival coaches Chris Barbas and Sal Tadaro, and they almost witnessed a moment of magic when James Isaiah turned and fired a solid shot on goal, but it posed no threat for Isaiah's housemate Alex Dunn in goal. Balcata pressed on, Mo attacks shot on goal just wide. Minutes later, he had a reasonable chance, but lost control and handed the percentage play to the Basie keeper. The game seemed destined for a draw, but Colombian marvel Gustavo Marulanda pounced on the ball, gave himself some room for a shot and fired. The deflected shot beat Dunn and hit the post, which allowed Bayswater's Paul McCarthy to swoop in on the crumbs and slot the ball home. City with the eighth win of the season, their unbeaten run continues, Balcata left to ponder on what could have been. Very disappointing, I uh, thought we were probably the better side for, for the major part of that game and, and um, you know we, we came here with a, with a plan, we executed that plan for 90 minutes and and uh, unfortunately, you know, a deflection and, and uh, the bounce went right in front of goal and they, they finished it, which is what we didn't do. As far as, you know, the way we played, I was happy with it and the fact that we got one late, you know, you keep seeing clean sheets, you've always got a chance of winning games. Can you see yourself losing? Of course I can. Every, every Saturday before the game I can see us losing, but we, we prepare properly, we work hard and I've got a great dressing room with a great bunch of boys that want to fight for each other. Sorrento travelled to Joondalup and they dominated the first half. With a formidable lineup and tall timber in Jamie Harnwell and Steve McDonald, the goals were always going to be tricky to deal with. And as it happened, Harnwell scored a trademark header into the back of the net in the first half. ECU's response came from this free kick, but to no avail. Harnwell's effort proving to be the match winner. Pretty pleased. Uh, you know, I've been kicking my heels on the side for for the season. Um, team's been doing well, so when you get the chance, you've got to make the most of it. So. Got one, probably should have had a couple more, but uh, we got three points, so that's the important thing. And thanks to fan cam, some exciting goals were captured at Leaders Stadium between Floriot and Armadale. Some magic all round from the Athena boys allowed David Hegney to come up with a showstopper. A graceful chip over Armadale's keeper, squeezing the ball under the crossbar to give the blue and white fans more than enough to celebrate. In other results, Stirling continued their winning form with a victory over Perth. Coburn edged out the NTC and Bunbury, despite their solid effort, went down at home against United. To the table now and Bayswater cement their spot in first place. Second place, Stirling, the only team who could catch them. Sorrento are locked in third spot. Inglewood are close behind and Coburn clinched the coveted fifth spot on goal difference. To next week, Armadale host league leaders Bayswater can the Southerners cause the upset of the season? Balcata should earn three points against the NTC. United have a tough battle at home against the Lions. Bunbury could be tricky for Coburn. Sorrento lock horns with Floriot in what could be one of the games of the year. And Perth will be desperate for points against Joondalup. Highlights of this weekend's games, as always, on Football 360 next week. And that wraps up another exciting and jam-packed show of Football 360 this week. Plenty of action here at Frank Drago Reserve. We'll be back again. Hope you enjoyed the show. Until next week, it's bye for now.